I mix over 200 songs a year, and many times people send me a song sounding like this. And expect my mix to make it sound like this. I think people believe there's a plugin for everything, and I have some sort of magical tool that can create doubles and harmonies and all sorts of vocal changes to make a chorus sound huge. Unfortunately, building a huge chorus involves some hard work and careful planning. In today's video, I will walk you through the process. Let's go. All right, so this is a great song by an artist named Sunita. The song is called Punchline. Make sure to check it out. I'll put it in the link below. Uh, it's produced by CJ and Cruz. And I'm gonna play you the verse to the hook just so you can get an idea of the song and then we'll start dissecting it and, and I can show you what makes it build so well. Playing with love almost broke me a couple of times So I stayed low in my own peace It was only me, myself and I Can't free, take a chance Cause my girls said to lay you Okay, so as you guys can hear, it, it definitely takes you on a journey. It starts small and slowly starts building. And that's one of the key components to building a big chorus is to have dynamics that come down first. So let's go one by one and just look at the vocal tracks. Now, first and foremost, just notice that all these purple tracks are vocals. They're all vocals. And that's one of the keys to building a big chorus and, and building a big song is to have multiple stacks. And we'll go over that, but first I want to just show you how it's built. It starts with a verse, and all it is is this single vocal. Playing with love almost broke me a couple of times. Very intimate, very just you and, and her while she's beginning to tell you the story. Then it goes into this pre-chorus, right? But what she does is she adds a double, a full double, and this is stacked. So you have a left and right double here. And that isn't just a copy and paste double. She actually re-sang it twice and made sure that it lined up with the lead vocal. Then you have a pre-low. So she's adding another note to this. Carefree, took a chance, cause my girls said to. And as you can hear, she's singing that too. So she's doing an octave below the actual note. That's where you can start adding some weight and thickness to a vocal. Finally, at the end of this pre, she adds another harmony line, a middle harmony line, which is this. Felt like a merry-go-round. If you add that with a lead, Issues felt like a merry-go-round And it just gives the, the, the pre a little bit of a twist towards the end of it. Then you come in with this hook. And so here's the hook here, the lead vocal hook. There's always going to be one single lead vocal. But then you're going to want to add the stacks onto it. As you notice, as the song goes along, there's more stacks. There's the hook doubles. So left and right. You try me. And you can hear they're a little bit off from each other. Not a lot. That's pretty perfect. And I think this is vocal lines. But they're close enough that they are the same, but also have a little bit of variation. And that's the difference between just taking a vocal and duplicating it and then shifting it over a little bit. It's still going to sound phasey. This sounds natural. And like three people are kind of singing together. And that's the key difference of actually doubling the vocals as opposed to just duplicating them, right? So you have the doubles, and then she has a low harmony, and this one sings all the way through with the main choruses. You try and make a joke out of me. 
Got everybody left and I see. So that's adding another layer to the chorus and making it bigger. So if you just take these doubles, right? So the doubles. You try and make a joke out of me. Now when you bring these doubles in, uh, the lower harmonies. You try and make a joke out of me. Got everybody left and I see. See how much bigger that sounds? And that's that's nothing except just stacking vocals. And that right there is the key, is to stack vocals, but make sure they sound on time. The verse and the main double has to be the same. You have to be able to hear it and notice that, like not really notice it's there, but know it's there. And then the same with the low harmonies. They need to be on time with the lead vocal, but in the different note. And that's that's the beauty of building a big harmony stack and making a chorus sound massive. She's also adding these other notes in here, and this is stuff you can do to bring more attention to it, ear candy, if you will. And it's on these big parts. So she wants this chorus to hit with a you. I cannot sing, but check it out. You. If we take that stab out, feels different, but that stab just makes it really feel strong and like she wants you to understand what she's saying. You. So there's that. Then this is another key here. You have like a double chorus basically here, right? But the second time she adds so much more to it in order for it to feel even bigger on the second part. So all these stacks are added here, which is a, a, a mid harmony, another uh, a couple different mid harmonies and then this high harmony let's just solo these Line. Line. and then here's another key so we've had this huge chorus that just built in and then we're going back to the verse now watch the energy shift here from this chorus to this verse Okay, so you notice that the verse is, is changed, right? We've come back down. Now, this verse has a little more energy, and that's something you see a lot, where the second verse will have a bit more than the first verse, because we've gone so high up from the chorus. If we go all the way back down to where that first verse is, it might be too much of a dramatic change. So here, what she's doing is she has a lead. It's broken up into two here, right? But then there's some different harmonies going on in the verses. Let's just solo these so you guys can hear the the harmonies. Bitch, please, you ugly as she didn't mind. Let it slide. And so that's just adding more character to this. We've built the song up, we're building, you can tell it's getting a little more dramatic. Then we go back to the pre-chorus. And the pre-chorus is basically the same. It's sang a little bit differently, I think, but all the notes are the same as they were in the first pre-chorus. And then lastly, we go to the hook. And the hook's the same. So our hook's the same, but what's happening now is we're adding some ad-libs and some ad-libs in between the hook. And this is more for singing, but you could even do this if you're it's a rap song or, or whatever we are working on. Uh, just to give it a little more spice, make it sound a little bit different than the first hook and also add a little more energy. So here's these ad libs she's adding into the second hook. You joke out of me. So they sound different than the actual hook and that's what makes them unique and stand out. Let, let me play this one back with everything. I make a joke out of me. So you hear how it sounds different than the, the, the actual hook going on, but still fits in harmonically. Okay, so after this chorus, we're going to the bridge.
Okay, so with the bridge, it's a repeat bridge as well. And we did kind of the same thing we did on the verses. Single vocal for the first part of the bridge, and then a double, just, just basic mid harms here. Those colored clothes and that pair of them oversized shoes. Okay, it gives it a different feel, makes it feel bigger, and we're building back into this massive last chorus, right? Then the last chorus, it's the second chorus going in the outro. And what's different here is this hook ad lib here is huge, and it really just carries the chorus to the final, you know, climactic part of this song, which is punch. Line. It really makes you feel all the emotion that the song gives. Okay, so now that we've gone through the song and you've heard the different parts and we know how the song was built by, you know, adding parts and taking parts away to create different kind of dynamic, dynamic situations, how can you at home build a song and make it sound bigger in your choruses? Well, the, the first thing you can always do is have your lead vocal. Make sure the lead vocal is on one track all the way through and it sounds really good through the whole chorus, right? Then... The first step, and this might be all you need for your song, just to, depending on what kind of song it is, all you need to make it sound bigger is some doubles. Just double the chorus just the way it was twice. Sometimes people do it three or four times. And as you can see here with her song, she has a pan hard left and hard right. And that's fine. That's fine for two, two doubles. That's a great way to do it. If you do four stacks, and I usually suggest that you do things in doubles, it just makes it feel a certain way. You could do hard left, hard right, and then 50, 50. And then you have those four plus the lead. And just that alone will make your chorus sound a hell of a lot bigger than the verses, okay? Then you can experiment from there. Try to find the different harmony notes. Like she did in, I think, the pre-chorus, where she did a low note, that's a good way to start. Uh, it's really easy just to figure, figure out the octave down and do the low note and add that to it. And then you can add, you know, thirds and sevenths and different harmonies to make it even bigger. The more you stack, the bigger it's going to get. The more doubles you get, the more it will sound bigger. It's just the way it is. Duplicating that will not get you the same place as actually doubling the vocals. And then once you get that, that could be well enough for what you're doing. You can then do stuff like this, adding other notes to certain parts and building it that way as well. Okay, guys, I hope this video is helpful for you today. I grew up working in big format recording studios where I was able to learn all this stuff from producers and engineers that have been doing it for a long time. I feel sometimes in the home recording world that we all live in, you don't get that experience, so you don't even know how songs are built. So that's why I wanted to create this video, hoping that someone out there might need to understand how to build a song. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you do need your songs mixed or mastered, hit me up at mixandmastermysong.com. You can also find my courses and presets there as well. Talk to you soon.